So this is part of a series of videos on intelligence analysis techniques that I think are useful for people in making sort of forecasts about the future um, and being sort of more aware of their own decision making and their own bias. And so I want to talk about pre-mortems. Um, this is something that's relatively new to the intelligence community back in 2007 when I really started to kind of look into um, intelligence analysis techniques and became interested in the intelligence community. Um, Premortems hadn't yet really been developed and weren't on the radar of, of um, structured analytic techniques that people were using. Um, but in recent years, it, it sort of has started popping up in that list. And so I think I'd like to kind of introduce it and talk about why it's a, a cool and, and handy technique that most people can use fairly easily. Um, so this is something that was developed by Gary Klein. Um, and he sort of presents in, in a Harvard uh, Business Review article um, from 2007, which is why it wasn't on the radar when I uh, first started uh, collecting materials on structured analytic techniques. Um, and Klein initially develops this as a way of thinking about sort of project planning, right? So the idea is that uh, you sit down with your team and you come up with a plan for a project and then you sort of conclude, oh, the project failed, let's brainstorm like how it failed and try to come up with solutions to fix those, those possible reasons. Um, so it was initially sort of a management tool, um, but the idea of, uh, of pre-mortems actually ends up working really well for forecasts and has been adopted by the intelligence community, but it also works really well for project management. And so um, just kind of building this in as an as a intellectual tool that you use regularly, uh, you might find all sorts of uses. Um, for, for this kind of a technique. Um, and so the basic idea is that, and I'll, I'll talk about this in the, the context of forecasting, but you can think about it in the context of project management if you wanted, um, that you are given a situation, you're asked to make a forecast and you make your best guess, right? You, you have the data available, you go through it, you make your best guess, whatever whatever technique you wanna use, whether it's just kind of your, your intuitive gut or whether it's something like um, analysis, competing hypotheses, get your forecast out there or your prediction out there. Um, and then sort of pause and say, okay, that's what I think is going to happen. Six months down the road, I got it completely wrong. I'm just going to sort of assume in six months time, I'm going to look back and just go, oh my gosh, I blew it. The exact opposite of what I predicted would happen has happened. How did that possibly come to pass? And so what you then do is you turn your attention to a process of brainstorming about how the heck you screwed up so badly, right? The kind of thing you would do as a post-mortem after a catastrophic failure, you're gonna do that now before, you know, before anything has actually failed. Um, and so you're gonna start brainstorming like, okay, so what are the pathways that could have led to that exact out opposite outcome? Like how would we have gotten from here to there? And sort of sketch those out and think about, um, things that you might have missed and, and didn't consider in that process and it may be like after this whole process is done that you look at those different pathways of like how could we have gotten to that exact opposite outcome and you're like yeah those are all ridiculous like none of those things are going to come to pass that's great but it also might be that you get to the end of that process and you look at those those other pathways to the complete opposite outcome of what you predicted and you said oh those a couple of those could actually play out i could see that like there are examples where that maybe is trending in that way. Or I've seen it happen like that elsewhere. That's more plausible than I initially considered. So we're going to think about like what those pathways look like. We're also going to think about the assumptions that we made, right? What was I assuming was going to happen? What was the, the story I was telling, the pathway I was expecting um, events to unfold along? Um, and as I sort of lay out sort of what that path is, um, which of those would have to be changed for me to be wrong, right? Where, where, where are the points of failure? Where are the breakdowns um, along that path that will, will divert us and drive us off that, that course? Um, and this is a way to develop what are called signposts, things that you can sort of lay out and say, if we get to this point, <laughs> it's a good bet that we're on this trajectory. If we get to this point and it's, you know, we, do, we don't get to this point, um, it's a good sign that we're maybe veering off down a different path. So that can be useful to develop. Um, it can also help you find out what are the critical points that your argument is hinging on, right? You're, you're assuming that an individual is going to act in a certain way, or you're going to assume that, you know, a pandemic is going to have a certain kind of an effect, or you're going to assume that a country is growing at a certain rate. Like there's lots of sort of assumptions that we can make about the world that can be really important to our analysis, 
And if we find that the entire thing hinges on those assumptions, maybe we better double check to make sure that those assumptions are valid, right? Do we have the data to back that up? Like, can I justify that? And how likely is it that I'm wrong about that assumption? And those are really important questions to ask yourself about those critical points in your argument. Because if you get those wrong, your forecast will be wrong. Um, if you have a minor assumption or a side point and you get that wrong, it might not affect the whole story. But finding those critical points, those critical assumptions, and really investigating, do I have the data to support that is really important. Okay, so um, there's some things about uh, pre-mortems that are, are really powerful intellectual tools, right? So one of the things that um, the intelligence community oftentimes encourages people to do when making forecasts or predictions is to not make a single prediction, but to make multiple predictions and then evaluate those predictions in terms of their likelihood of coming to pass, right? And so I can say my most likely expectation is this, but it's also possible we'll have this over here. And I'm gonna say my most likely expectation is 90%, this other thing is 10%. The pre-mortem's a good way to kind of generate those alternative um, pathways, right? What are other things that could happen? Um, how could we get there? How plausible are those? And so that's a, a useful thing to do that we oftentimes as human beings, once we think we have things figured out, we kind of put blinders on. Uh, a pre-mortem forces us to continue a process of brainstorming about other ways that things could go and consider the likelihood of those things. Um, I'm personally a fan of using pre-mortems as sort of an, an introspective um, I think about my own thinking, I think about my own assumptions, I do it for myself, um, but there's also a case to be made for um, doing pre-mortems in groups, and this is something that I think maybe with, um, with project management maybe makes a little bit more sense rather than my own sort of internal um, mental, mental catalog, but doing a pre-mortem in a group setting actually is, is a really powerful um, way to, to flip around the incentives that human beings have in group dynamics, right? And so if I just simply put forward a plan and say, here's a plan, or here's a forecast, is that a good forecast? Do we, do we like that forecast? Social pressure sort of says, oh, don't tell the boss that that's a terrible idea, right? Or don't tell my friend, I'm not going to tell my friend how stupid I think that is, right? There's that, that tendency to like maintain the cohesiveness of the group and not really call out um, weak arguments or weak assumptions or bad plans. But when you sort of enter into a pre-mortem situation in a group dynamic, right? Suddenly as you're going around the room, we all assume the failure has happened, right? We assume that it was a, it was a terrible plan. It was a bad forecast. And now we've got to figure out why. And suddenly the incentive is I can look good by coming up with a good argument about why that broke down. That being insightful in my critique is now something that will have people nodding along and being like, wow, I'm really glad Brian's in that meeting, right? He, he's really helpful. Right? I can score points for myself by being a good contributor to that critical process because the pre-mortem makes it from, I'm critiquing you and your plan or you and your idea to we're all collectively critiquing an imaginary scenario in which things have fallen apart. And we're trying to figure out why. Um, and that, that actually works really well. Um, it, 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 it turns it into a positive exercise. Okay, one last little um, set of things um, that I think kind of summarize what makes the, the pre-mortem great, right? I mentioned it's a great way to get multiple possibilities or mul multiple pathways generated pretty quickly. Um, it's also a really good way of finding the data that you need, right? Once you've identified those critical assumptions, the things that have to collapse and fail for you to sort of go off course and end up in a, in a different outcome or, or far away from you expected. Um, once you've identified those, then we can sort of really dig in and say, do I have the data to, to, to justify that assumption? And if I don't, how do I go get that data? Um, and again, the intelligence community, um, because they have some resources, <laughs> um, is able to kind of take that next step. But I think we can too, right? And we can always, you know, read up a little bit more or do some background number crunching to kind of figure out if we've actually got things figured out um, the way that we we actually think that we do. Um, but more than that, I think the, the pre-mortem is a quick way to identify biases that we are bringing to the table, right? Those leaps in logic, those assumptions that we're making that are gonna be important that we can't really justify and we can't really defend. 
Um, this is a good way to find those. Um, and I think that that is, is probably the most valuable thing, at least for me, as somebody who oftentimes sort of analyzes from my gut to kind of step back and say, well, is that really the case? Or is that me being grumpy today? <laughs> is that me because I've had a particular set of experiences? How, how, how reliable are the assumptions that I'm making? Um, and that, that's really a, a good conversation to have. And if nothing else, a pre-mortem process forces you to have that conversation, to be more cognizant of your own thought process and, and how you're building your arguments.